No, not me, please. I hate attention, thank you. Hi everybody, thank you so much, all you beautiful people for coming tonight. We're so happy to be here. I don't know if you know this, but my, one of my best closest, my best girlfriend is with me tonight. You're welcome. Um, I want to take you back to late 2000, early 2001, and I am where I often was then, at a giant thumping, carousing, glug, glug, glug party at Dame Melissa McCarthy's duplex on Formosa Avenue near Willoughby in Los Angeles, California. Don't go there, she doesn't live there anymore, <laughs> believe it or not. And then one night I was there and I looked across the room and I saw this gorgeous, tiny, skinny, raven-haired beauty with beautiful blue eyes. And I was like, I know her. And uh, we just, something happened and we came across the room in a loving, romantic, and yet purely platonical way. And we just realized later that we had been separated at birth and then after hanging out with Melissa and the gang for a while, we snuck off one day on a Sunday and went shopping on La Brea at Maisonic Cafe. Anybody, LA? Busy, <laughs> busy got that. Um, so, and I, and we had, we, she took me back to her house and we had the best hot chocolate I've ever had. And tonight, please welcome, looking alarmingly exactly the same as when I met her, Dame Lauren Graham. <laughs> I love you. Thank you! Thank you so much. So nice to see everybody. Oh, stop. No, no. No, no. Okay. Okay. Oh, hello. Oh, we're both wearing velvet. What a surprise. We didn't plan it at all. <laughs> Um, that was so nice. Thank you so much. It's so um, wonderful to be back here at the 90, why am I plugging the 90 Second Street Y? The 90 Second Street Y. Everybody get your tickets for Phil Rosenthal. And, um, and I'm so excited to um, be here with Sam. This seat is very sinky. It is. It, it's like a, I don't know, um, I'll, I'll get it. Um, Thank you to all of you for being here. I know some of you tried to uh, go to the event as originally scheduled a couple of weeks ago, and I managed to make it through this entire time um, without getting COVID until the day before I was due here. Um, and so many people traveled, I felt terrible to have to cancel so that I didn't give you the, the vid. But, um, but here we are, and I'm, I'm just so, so thrilled to be here. But I still don't know how to sit in this chair. Thank you. Yeah, and we want to give a shout out to all the international fans out there watching online. Mm -hmm. And uh, who and were- And the national ones too. And the national, heck, the regional. <laughs> Come on, down the street. <laughs> Couldn't, yeah. Uh, I've never done this before. Good luck to everyone. <laughs> And also, uh, yeah, everyone who was supposed to come and didn't make it and came and blah, 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 we love you and thank you so much for doing that. Yes. Okay, the first question our friend Kathy asked us <laughs> when she said, when I, Lauren asked me to do this at Thanksgiving, uh, she said, what, what are you was, gonna wear? Wait, what was your favorite side at Thanksgiving? This, the stuffing was really good because we both have... We both have the gluten problem. Yeah. Try to make stuffing that's not stuffing. This one? can pull together a gluten-free Thanksgiving like you never, she's a great cook. Do you I know this about her? She's an amazing, yes. Thank you, you go thank to, you very much. What questions? Listen, you go to her house, you wanna know what it's like, you go to her house. She's the mother that I, I have a mother. She's the younger mother, older younger sister that I didn't have, and I still have. I have sisters, anyway, here we go. This is your fourth book, Lauren Graham. Oh. The first was your 2013 novel, Someday, Someday, Maybe. Yes. yes. And next came the book of essays, Talking As Fast As I Can, from Gilmore Girls to Gilmore Girls, and everything in between in 2016 was like your year in the life diaries and a lot of fun industry stuff and some other stories that I knew and loved. 2018 brought in conclusion, Don't Worry About It, which is an expansion of the commencement speech you gave at your hometown high school, mm -hmm. um, which is also very, I mean, as an adult, you can still read it and get a lot of good info out of it, <laughs> sure. And now we have, have I told you this already, stories I don't want to forget to remember. <laughs> 
Now, let me tell you, this... <laughs> you don't have to clap for that. <laughs> this phrase, I can... <laughs> it's apt, because I cannot tell you the number of times. Just, have I told you this already? And I could be like, yes, last year, or yes, in the car a half an hour ago. <laughs> uh, anyway... <laughs> Can you take us back now to that first book, your novel? Now, when and how did you decide to write it? And how long had the idea to write a full-blown novel, how long was that percolating in you during your acting career? I don't know. It's very, the, I have learned to ask my brain fewer <laughs> questions about how it works. That, that incidentally is the title of my next book. Um, <laughs> I really don't understand it. I was a uh, devout reader as a kid. My dad read to me every night, um, and I was an English major. Um, I, thank you, I, <laughs> um, just to brag about my four-year-old self, I skipped kindergarten because I could read, um, and the teacher left the, the classroom one day and came back and I was reading a book to the class, and she wondered if I had uh, memorized it, and then they sent me in a bunch of tests, it was the 70s, and they were like, sure, go to first grade, we don't care. And um, the only joke I got out of skipping kindergarten is that that's why I don't know how to share. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Not true. <laughs> and um, so books, reading, always really important to me. And I almost feel, and then I wrote papers in college, and, um, but they were boring. And um, so I almost feel like it was the accidental, that education yeah. and experience. And then I have to credit um, Gilmore Girls, don't hold your applause <laughs> for, thank you. <laughs> Oh, you've heard of it. <laughs> um, I think you'd have to be a, um, I, you'd have to, to really not be interested to spend that long with that language and that amount of language and that uh, beautiful and clever and elevated language and not have it kind of get in there somewhere. So yeah. I, I feel like that was my graduate school in a way. And then when I was on Parenthood for the first time, I, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to ask for applause on that. Um, I think on Parenthood, it was the first time I had, it, in all those years from almost, you know, skipping kindergarten <laughs> until then, I had three jobs at a time. I was doing summer stock. I was, you know, doing all the work of getting to a place where I had a Wednesday afternoon off and I didn't know what to do with it. Right. <laughs> and, um, and I connected to that time. I mean, I almost hadn't had a moment to think about, oh my God, the soles of your shoes are red. They're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said, I bought them in 2020, haven't worn them since. Thank you, COVID. Really? I wow. said, I'm gonna save them for a special occasion, boom. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was, uh, shocked to find myself as an employed actor and I almost hadn't had a minute to really reflect on it or think about it. You know, people ask all the time, when did you know any number of things? When did you know it was going to work out? When did you, you, when did you feel like you made it? Which you never feel, by the way. And, and, but this was a time when I thought about the person I was, who, who the same person, um, but, you know, waitressing and um, I worked as a tutor, I would drive all over town and um, just anything to get the money to pay my rent and I thought, how did I think I was going to do, do that? Like, yeah. how did I, what drove me? What The audacity. The audacity yeah. of hope, really. I yes. mean, what is, that's a good title for a book. The, um, Write that down. <laughs> But I really hadn't had the minutes to, to think about it. And, and in thinking about that, I, um, I never, it, this is ironic, uh, as especially a second book of essays, because I had been asked to write a memoir or, you know, about myself, and that just felt embarrassing to me somehow. And, um, and but I thought, but the fictional version of someone starting out and, and blindly pursuing um, anything, really, is, 
I, I just wondered if it would be of interest, and it was because of the weird way my brain worked, works, I just gave myself this task. Yeah. Sure, some people pick up sailing or whatever. Or and just I've... take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote, um, I just started kind of, um, it, you know, it opens with an actor anxiety dream, um, which we're all familiar with, and uh, some version of it, the test you didn't, you forgot to take, the, you know, and um, because that worry or that um, anxiety, you know, mm -hmm. is, is, I think, universal, but especially for actors or yes. artists, when you don't know, you have no reason to believe the phone's gonna ring. And in those days, you were literally waiting for the f actual phone to ring and somebody to leave a message the, on your The search. ancient art of the telephone, one of the many sentences <laughs> I love that I wrote down from your book. And speaking <laughs> of your book, let's jump ahead to this book. Um, has your writing process changed since you did Somewhere, Somewhere, Maybe in these books of essays to now? Do you, is the process different? Are there any rituals or idiosyncrasies or like you have to be at a certain chair writing with a certain pen or what do you, what's the story, sister? Um, I am still much uh, less productive than I want to be. I, I, and I still, as much as I love the process of writing once I'm in it, to get started is still like, um, like, like, like it's gonna bite me or something. I'm like, oh, I, I'll wait. I'll just wait one, t one second. I'll make like another coffee or I'll, I'll, I'll go. I, you know what? I really should return that phone call. Like, I just won't start. And then when I start, it's so fun and I love it so much. So I don't really understand what that is. This, uh, this was one of the. Um, this book had a little more process to it because I was doing something I had done before. For so long, I, I went from a novel to the essays, and I got asked to adapt the novel as a, a TV pilot. And I was doing all these things I'd never done before and was yep. doing them for the first time. And like anything, you get to the end and you go, oh, God, I would do it so differently. But this was the first time. This was during the pandemic, and I can't take a nap. And, I, um, and, and I, some titles started coming to me and that's how I know in the in the essay work that um, I'm thinking about something I don't know um, what it's I, I, I don't have the shape of it but mm -hmm. at least and different from fiction which you does need a structure at some point along the way just the seed of the title of you know it's in the book but I did, I was sitting with Mae Whitman, don't hold your applause, and, <laughs> and um, you can hold your applause if you want, I don't, I don't mean to be bossy. Um, I'm applauding her because if she was here tonight, I wouldn't be, so <laughs> thanks honey. Mae was going to moderate the last time, now she's in Europe I was eating pasta, but, um, <laughs> but uh, I was sitting with her and you know she's 20 years younger than me, which is really insulting. And um, <laughs> and she was like, I need a bra for work. You know, what do you think? And like, this is a really fun category I find in our friendship, which is like, <laughs> not bras if, per se, but but like, what what should I do about this? Because we come at things from such different places and different ages, but. Frequently, it's also really fun to watch that, the <laughs> two of them going at it. But frequently, I've, I learn something, and, um, but I also really like to be asked my opinion, and she was like, I really need a bra for work, and I was like, okay, well, she was like, she holds this thing up that she's like wearing, and she was like, she was like, cause this, I don't know, it's like scratchy, and I was like, well, A, that's not a bra. She was like, this is a bra, the bra I'm wearing is a bra, and I was like, no, no, what you're wearing is like, it's like a lingerie of like a 15 year old. Like it was like a t-shirt with like a string attached. And I was just like, that doesn't have any support. That doesn't have any. And she was like, well, I don't, what am I looking for this? And I was like, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Cause that's what I was looking for from the time I came to Los Angeles in the nineties, because that's, there was no separation between like Baywatch and like Masterpiece theater. Everyone was like, wanted the same <laughs> silhouette. Yep. And, and you just kind of, it was one of the, this, this would never fly today, but it was just one of those things where, because we were all auditioning and driving around, sitting in waiting rooms, you'd look around and you'd be like, oh, well, 
I must need either surgery or a trip to Victoria's Secret because that was just like the look everybody had and, and chicken cutlets and push up. Also, lady question. I have one or a few bras in my times, don't ask. <laughs> but there was a, like a, <coughs> a water situation. Oh, right? there was, or yes. A pump up thing, like yes. a boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Oh, I forgot all about that. There was, it was like a waterbed, but a bra. <laughs> Since I was and, able to look very like, you know, with a distance, disinterested in bras of the 90s, I was like, there's a lot going on suddenly. Yes, yeah. there was a pump situation, I think. Like, the, there was like a pump sneaker and somebody was like, why not put that up there too? <laughs> That's um, right. <laughs> but <clears throat> it just started me thinking about, it, it expanded into, into A, the difference in being friends with somebody who's, who's younger because you get stuck in ideas. You know those people who've had the same haircut for like 55 years. Like you get stuck in what you look like or who you are. And, yes. And if you don't constantly kind of look around and it's, and some of those beliefs are great. You know but, what? Oh my God, are you gonna do a dramatic reading? Yes. <laughs> because I, I'm, I'm, I'm on topic. I'm not just blurting yeah. like I do. But because you brought that up, I wanted to say about the old lady Jackson. I'm familiar also with old lady Jackson who came up with you in May. Uh, I wrote, uh, and I, her pal, Uncle Peepaw Pancake is. Uh, <laughs> For those I, of you who don't know, Old Lady Jackson <laughs> is, a, is a sort of character I created to be fun and young when things like this would happen at work, yeah. at Parenthood with May and Miles, and they'd say something and I wanted to like caution them but not be a fuddy-duddy, which using that word right there just really. <laughs> And I would be like, I don't mean to be like old lady Jackson, but um, are you sure that's safe or whatever? And so I kind of created this whole character, character, it's me. And, 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 and then, but so anyway, so and well, now was, she's like stands alone. Now she has her own like TV show. Well, now she like, she also likes a five o'clock dinner reservation. And listen, I was like, what? That's not us. And then after we did it a few, I was like, this is us now. <laughs> Five. Remember the day we went to dinner at 4:30, and we were like, "Okay, all right, That's, let's calm down." Do let's. <laughs> we, and then I'm pretty sure three or 3:30 was pitched for dinner one time, and I was like, "That's where we have to draw a line." <laughs> but I wanted to read this that you wrote in your book in the Old Lady Jackson chapter, which I. I hmm. A lot of this made me really tear up a lot, and we're gonna cry, and that's just the way it is. But she wrote, it's very useful to always have a friend who is much older and one who is much younger. The older friend will, the older friend will remind you what there is to look forward to, and the younger friend will keep you telling your stories over again so you'll remember not to forget them. An older friend will tell you of plenty of time yet, and a younger friend will make you forget time altogether because when you're with them, you'll feel, even for a moment, you're the exact same age. It's so beautiful. Oh my God, Sammy. <laughs> and I've lost some, you know, we lose her. Sometimes we lose a friend and it's good to read something like that, yeah. remember, anyway. <laughs> let's talk about directing. All right. <laughs> I was particularly fascinated by your essay, Red Hat, Blue Hat, which you write about gearing up to direct an episode of Mighty Ducks 2. <laughs> Still quacking, is that the name of it? <laughs> Mighty Ducks Why isn't two. it called Still Quacking? What the puck, is that the name? No? <laughs> and the sage advice given to you by the director, John Turtletaub. Now, could you talk a little bit more about any other vital aspects of directing you learned while being an actor? And are you pursuing any other directing opportunities? <laughs> Please, yes. I think one thing that happens in probably any um, pursuit is you, if you do your job long enough, in the, in the nicest possible way, you start to really notice when someone else is not doing a great job and, feel, <laughs> and get frustrated that if, they would, if I could only do that, then we would be out of here sooner. We'd get this done quick, more quickly. Or I, because one thing about being an actor that not everybody realizes because in some cases, actors are dum-dums. <laughs> And, but, in some, but in many cases, no, many cases they are not. And one of your jobs, when, when we did A Year in the Life, um, thank you. <laughs> now I'm just asking for it. Um, <laughs> um, Chef Roy Choi was one of our guest oh, stars. And 
he had never acted before, and I said, is this strange for you? And he said, no, you know, this reminds me of being in the kitchen. He's like, I'm, I'm in charge of my thing, but I'm totally aware of what's going on around me and how I can be the best team player. And that's what, over time, the experience of being on a set is, if you're, if you're paying attention and, and, and spending hours and hours with these people, I know what the technical jobs are and you know, what they need to do, do it the way they want to do it. And, and so it wasn't like that hideous thing where people are like, I know I'm an actor, but what I really want to do is direct. Like we were like, oh God. But it just did sort of evolve into a thing where I, I just felt like that was what was next. And um, so you're really, really smart. Thank that you. That really, really helps. <laughs> True. But there's all kinds of, smart and all kinds of, you know, it's, it's not, it, it's a strange, it's being a, a chef and also being aware of everyone else in the kitchen. And, and there's something about working on, on Mighty Ducks too, which is. Oh wow, a second shout out. <laughs> oh, Sway. Um, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Sway Batya, stand and take a bow. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's our only cameo for the night, right? No, I... um, where I, now I'm gonna sound like a real nerd, but where there's just something really beautiful about seeing the next generation, and um, I'm more interested in their journey. You know, mm -hmm. I sort of like, I already got way more than I thought I would as, you know, that person in the 90s with three jobs, you know, wondering if I would ever break through. And so, so it's such, the, the fun or the inspiration to me now um, comes from doing something different or something I haven't tried or getting to work with my young, talented cast and it, like wanting that to be a positive experience for them yeah. and and just being so blown away by how talented they are and how disciplined they are, how kind they are to each other. Um, you know, so what was the question? <laughs> so, um, so that was kind of the, where the inspiration um, to direct came from. And I don't have, and this is good news, <laughs> for, I don't have anything on the horizon and I'm really excited about that. <laughs> Oh, people are feeling sorry for me. No, uh, I, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> I, we don't know if the show is coming back, and I got to uh, visit with you guys and talk about this book. I got to make this book and put it out in the world. I'm, I'm so excited for a time when um, you know it's the holidays. I'm like really enjoying not having something hanging over my yes. head, yeah. and um, it's very you know, rare uh, occurrence and very lucky thing that I can take that moment and, you know, Because you know not something, panic. something's gonna come whether you know it's coming or not, so just enjoy the moment. But do you, I mean, it's a I joke. <laughs> it's a joke among actors, you, you, I don't know when you lose the thing of, I, you know, what, how long does this go? You know, how long, so we're already like so, so lucky to yeah, yeah. have gotten this far. Um, I wanted to talk about the Mochi the mo <laughs> chapter. First of all, let me tell you, if you're gonna be quarantining in Vancouver and you're lucky enough by the synchronicity, the goddesses and the gods, and I mean as in sh gods as in Cher and Dorothy Parker and <laughs> B. Arthur, let's face it. Um, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Golden Girls, no, come on. <laughs> the Golden, the Gilmore, come on. Um, I can't I, tell you, by the way, how many times a dress, all kinds of people have been like, I mean, you were just so good on Golden Girls. And I'm like, thank you, thanks. <laughs> also, several times in an airport, they'll be like, Lindsey Graham. Oh. <laughs> I'm always like, polite, though, I'm always polite. At least say, <laughs> at least say Heather Graham, for God's sake. I got that, too. <laughs> but anyway. I was a personal story. Do we have time for one? <laughs> I don't know how that all magically happened. We were in the same building for a while and she had just finished her quarantine for two weeks. It was in the fall of 2020. And I started mine and I said, I think I'm gonna be fine. I live alone, it's a nice apartment. And she was like, no, 
Wednesday of week two, you're gonna lose your mind. And I was like, not me, I'm different that way, I'm real strong. Um, week two, Wednesday, I was like, God, ah, nah, crazy person. But this one, we, we did nothing to break quarantine. No Canadian officials, if you're listening. But I was lucky that I was on the second floor and, and she would come and there was a special coffee place with a magical chocolate hazelnut gluten-free cookie that I still have dreams about. And she would come and leave them by my door and my coffee and then I would go to the balcony and she would be down the street and it was like Romeo and Juliet, Juliet <laughs> Lauren Graham and Romeo was this crazy person in the West, like, <laughs> um, it rains a lot. <laughs> um, and uh, we got to have this nice, I just wanted to say that, that was really fun. And then I was glad that you talked about Mochi because I was there for a lot of his trials and tribulations. And I know you talk about your mom and everything. Was that particularly cathartic to, 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 to write about? And did you feel, what was the feeling around that once you finished it? Was it like cathartic? So Mochi is a dog I adopted and then ultimately found a better home for, which is a long story that's in the book. book. Um, and what, and it was a very difficult experience for any number of reasons. Um, and in, in the process of worrying about this dog, trying to take care of this dog, and ultimately letting the dog go, I felt I had an understanding I hadn't had before about my mom, who mostly did not raise me, and um, and has now been gone for, for many, many years. But I had never um, approached the subject, almost even in my mind, because while my mom passed at 61, her mom, my um, grandmother, only just passed this year at 101. And, and she was a very um, proper Southern religious, um, beautiful, um, emotional woman, my, my grandmother, my grandfather on that side was a Southern Baptist preacher, and, um, and it was very painful for her that it had not worked out with my mom and my dad, and that, you know, she was, my grandmother was a big part of my life, um, and I just felt it would be disrespectful to her and how I know, even she doesn't, my grandmother was so conservative that I would just try to, like, hide things from her, <laughs> like, did I just, let's pretend bad Santa just did, doesn't exist. <laughs> and, and, and she would go along, she would go along with a lot of them for her own good. Like she would just be like, oh, I don't know. I, well, that's that TV show, you talk so fast. So, so, <laughs> um, she was really, really conservative. And, and um, so any talk about my mom, even if I was saying like something great. So all of that, none of, I don't even, that's not really, in there, but it's why I waited. And also, I know that it is, you know, in some books by actors or people you know from something else, people enjoy, I mean, enjoy is the wrong word, but, but you know, some people open up and tell everything. Yeah. And my model for who I admire and sort of what I enjoy reading and what I want from a book like this is more comedic and uplifting and just kind of fun. So I was torn tonally even by, I was like, do I, is this? So I struggled with it because I did want to tell this story. It was something that was important, but I, I couldn't almost decide how to tell it, how far to go. And then there was the parallel that I'm paralleling a dog with a human baby and you know, that me and and so I don't know I but it was really about feelings you know it was really just about um, and and how in, in talking about being different ages um, you know I just understand things differently at this age than I would have at my mother's age when you know so um, that was a little, bit, a little about that. Well, it was beautiful, and I'm so glad you wrote it, and it really meant a lot to me. And it's just a beautiful, beautiful essay. Thank you. And it's gorgeous. Um, now, uh, a little different tact here. Fast speed round. Margarita or martini? Margarita! I know that. 
Fajitas or nachos? Fajitas. <laughs> I know the answers. I'm just like. Fajitas, but we've, well, we've, we've kind of turned, we turned on fajitas we've, because. We've turned on fajitas. <laughs> Alert the media. Well, Fajita I turned earlier than you. Well, I just got tired of my hair smelling like smoke exactly. going home. Exactly. But I love fajitas so much. But also now that we can't have flour tortillas, like what's the point? Ugh. Ugh. Anything that sizzles in a restaurant, you're gonna smell like it. Y'all know that, right? Uh, London or Paris? What? Well, London, London. Okay, no one's gonna take it <laughs> oh, oh my God, they are. I forgot about that part. This London, is like Venus or Mars. <laughs> like no one from there. Okay. <laughs> True or false, lasagna. <laughs> uh, what are some of your favorite books? It can be a few. Okay. Okay. Like, is this lasagna, the cookbook? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, this is called Random Spin the Wheel. I, I just love made it. that up. <laughs> um, some books that I have returned to again and again are all the J.D. Salinger short stories, all the Nora Ephron essays, um, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn by Betty Smith, which is, um, um, really? Um, I, uh, I mean, I kind of, like the way I read is like eating, like if I had a real problem. <laughs> I like, I'm like, ah, 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 ah. okay, what's next? Ah, 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 ah. Um, so Dorothy Parker's meant a lot to me, Flannery O'Connor's meant a lot to me. And, and these, just in terms of like revisiting things, these are in some cases books I'll go back to again and again. Um, so, so those are some of my like, you know, classics that I kind of are touchstones in a way yeah. to see kind of where. I don't know what, what, because I remember reading Catcher in the Rye as a very young person. I had a, my dad would take me to the bookstore and he'd go to his section and I'd go to mine. And I thought this was like a miraculous, um, uh, wool over, pulled over his eyes because he, I was like, what, how much can I get? And he was like, you can get as much as you can carry. Really? And I would get like a stack of books now, had this been lipstick, he would have been like, no, no, we're not doing that. But, you know, he was like, yeah, of course. So reading was fun to me, and I didn't realize also educational. But so I would get, I would literally judge books by their covers um, beyond the, like, horse stories that I kind of knew what I was getting. And consequently, I read a lot of things probably earlier than most people, um, just because I thought the cover was intriguing. Um, and even though that doesn't really make sense because Catcher in the Rye cover is pretty boring, but I read Catcher in the Rye when I was probably 11, and I went to my dad and I said, this is the best book I've ever read. Really? And he said, which is, not, he's not like a naysayer, but he, he just, I don't think he understood, like I was, bring, I, you know, the, the incredible impact it had on me. And he said, well, you'll feel differently when you get older. And I was like, oh, no, I won't. <laughs> And, and so I, for some reason, I would like go back and, and read it at, at different, I know what he means and what he yeah, means I, now. I, I, I do too. Um, yeah. yeah, I do. Um, so but now just to put a, whatever, ta I read weird, for me, I like, I like English murder. That's what I really <laughs> read a lot of. Um, we like those, t oh, I like the TV show. I like the TV too. show too, because, because it's murder, but it's cozy. <laughs> It's in front of a warm fire. It's fine. Um, like the Richard Osman books, which are which are um, uh, Thursday Murder Club. It's here's here's this first pitch. There are old people <laughs> in a retirement home, and they solve murders. Have you not read these? No. Thank you. What's it called? It's they're the th it's the Thursday Murder Club. It's a whole series. The characters are so good. They're really fun and funny. Um, but also, I like like the woman and the girl with the window in the car. You know, like the train. Yeah, yeah. I like anything yeah, that's just like yeah, a thriller yeah. kind of. You know, who like who done it? Which it doesn't. I make love any sense. the woman in the car and the window <laughs> in the train. <laughs> Classic. That was a cliffhanger. I um wait. I promise. This is a, a question. I promise, Sam. I will sing more on camera and be in shows where I sing. Oh. Yes or yes <laughs> or yes. <laughs> I don't know how, okay, I don't know. First of all, I love singing, but I'm okay. Like, I, there's certain things I can do. I can do characters, I can do, I can be loud. Like, you know, I, there, but, and I did come up in musical theater and I love musical theater. 
Um, and but now the kids today, with their American Idol and their voice, like kids come out of the womb like uh, Celine Dion, and like there's, the singing is so insanely good. And then there's kind of some technological stuff they can do to kind of help. And and so I think in terms of a singing TV show, like May Whitman is in a singing TV show that's coming out. It's, it's not what they call it. It's, they call it a TV show. Um, <laughs> called Up Here that's coming out on Hulu, and I'm just really intrigued by that because it's, um, uh, there are ways to continue to reinvent the yes. idea. Um, and what I liked about Zoe's playlist, what, thank you. Was, <laughs> I was actually trying to like shove that in with no time for applause, weirdly, I don't know why, because I didn't want to make you feel pressure. Um, but I thought, you know, this is just an interesting idea. and and. Uh, something that nobody's tried in a while, and yeah. and you know, also for two seconds, and they were like, and you you would be the boss. I was like, no one will believe me as the boss. And then I was like, hold on, I'm the boss. Like I I, I, I was like, why am I? What, what do I got to be like? You, you know, this person all the time? No. So um, so I love the challenge, and yep. but I don't know what else there is to do. Did you pre-record pre everything and then you lip sync to it, right? Yes, unless you're Bernadette Peters, who did it all live uh, on that show. What? She was like, she was like, I don't understand. I don't. This doesn't. You know, she doesn't record. She's a live right. singer, yeah, yeah, and yeah. um, and and then and then we were all like, wait, that was even a possibility? Like we like. <laughs> She's so lovely, lovely. I, I, I have met her twice, and both times I'm sure she was calling 911 like any minute because once on Zoe's, I was like, oh, Bernadette's here? Oh my God, she's here? I, I met her once when I was on Broadway. She probably won't remember. Anyway, um, <laughs> well, she's in a fitting. That's okay. And I like walked kind of into her fitting. What? You did not I'm tell sure me I'm sure I knocked. I, there's a part of me that loses my mind when I love somebody so much and I forget manners and- That they're and, maybe in their underwear at the fitting? She wasn't, it was okay. <laughs> but <laughs> like I would burst in the door and somebody's like pinning her and she was like, hello? And I was like, I have to say something. But so yeah, so that's how you do that. <laughs> I, I think we're going to have some audience questions, but I pulled some stuff off the Twitters. Um, oh. Have you heard? Uh, and this one. Oh, oh, yeah. I, had a, oh. I, had, I had, just before I forget, there were, how many did I tell you? I texted this to you. Tick, tick, one is tick people tock. keep asking me because I was forced to mention that I happened to have met Taylor Swift. <laughs> <coughs> um, and May was really mad because I said, at someone's birthday party. And she was like, it was mine and Rachel's birthday party. Like, why, why wouldn't you tell people that? It's like the only cool thing I did all summer. And um, she was so nice, and she, uh, but the people asked, did anybody, was there a picture? No, there's no picture. I want to meet her. Okay, Tell let me May. call her. <laughs> TikTok, TikTok. What's TikTok, oh, okay. TikTok, if somebody asked, um, was there anything that didn't make it in the book? Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is my assistant. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> Yes, continue. Um, sometimes, especially for me, um, your book is late and they really got to start printing it. So sometimes things don't make it in. Um, and also I couldn't crack this, but I had an essay called My First and Last Day on TikTok, which <laughs> was going, well, maybe not. Well, which was, which was Jenny Han, who is the writer, fantastic writer and of To All the Boys I've Loved series and The Summer I Turned Pretty. She's this is, wow, this is a real heavy friend name drop in like two seconds. Um, but anyway, Jenny is a friend and she loves TikTok. She's very good at it. And um, I was like, can I, can, can we just take an hour and, and like just show it to me, like explain it to me. And um, it was, and I thought it was gonna be hilarious and it wasn't, I'm not, I wasn't funny. I was so old Lady Jackson about it. I was like, but so, so how do that, and I'm good with technology, like, like there's something that you get, you know, as a person over 40 or whatever, because people start being like, let me do it. You don't know how to, blah, 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 whatever. And I'm like, I got it. I know how to, I know how to do the apps, whatever. And, um, <laughs> and, and so I'm not unsavvy in that way, I know, I know. but this one, I, I was like, so people made the, thing where they, how, what, what was the technique, like did they make a movie or they had a, th like Jenny was like, what? Like why don't you understand this? So, yeah. 
and then I couldn't understand because as I talked about, you know, these, these ideas come and then usually they become something else where I'm talking about, I mean, I guess the thing to, to have been talking about was feeling out of time or if my dislike for social media <laughs> or whatever, but um, it didn't come in, it didn't become anything. But maybe it will. Because, you, never know. you know, I should ask my Esther. And for the paperback, last time we did a um, bonus chapter, so maybe that will be a bonus chapter for the paperback. Or some other thing. Send me your suggestions. <laughs> Esther Newberg is my literary agent. That's why I was yelling <laughs> Esther, not just like, es is there an Esther in the house? <laughs> OK. <laughs> All right. Do you relate more to Lorelai Gilmore or Sarah Braverman in your everyday life? From Kate. I uh, was the luckiest person in the universe the day I opened the script to Gilmore Girls. And it is like, <laughs> like those moments like when we became friends across a crowded room or other things that only happen in musical theater where I was like, it's, this is, it's, it's me, it's mine, it's, it's like, it's better than me, it's like, it, there's a recognition that happens that I don't know is, has ever happened yeah. in, in work, you know, in like, you read something and uh, immediately, I, I don't know how other actors do it, but I'm, I'm in it. I'm like, ooh, can I play this? Ooh, does that make sense? I don't know, that scene, mm. and, and this was just, and, and often when something bumps me, I'm like, oh, I, uh, I don't, I, I, this doesn't feel real, or this doesn't, anyway. What well, clearly has stood the test of time. Yeah. Because it's still, is, I think it's just, a, it's power and it's language, and it's, it's just still giving and giving and giving to us as you are, so. Thank you. You and Amy both. Well, All the gang, everyone, everyone, yeah. That show was very, very smart and really, really kind. And I just think there aren't many of those that you can, that you would want to return to once you know how the story goes, you know. And, and I've had people over the years say they related to certain storylines as a younger pe pe person and then others, you know, as, as they got older and the language is so dense, I could barely say it in that amount of time, let alone could you hear it, everything, you know, and, and so it, it, you can, it's like a good song, you can go back and play it again. And on that same topic, I have this, because I'm also curious, this is from Anisha. Hi, Lauren. Hi. That's it, no. <laughs> um, uh, favorite Kelly Bishop moment. Uh. I have a couple, but I, one I don't think I can tell. What? It was on the show. Do you mean in real life? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh Kelly's just uh, She's the best. First of all, an incredible friend, an incredible mentor, um, incredibly um, insightful, and a little bit bossy, which is something I didn't know. Uh, Emily Gilmore? What? Yeah. <laughs> But in, for me, to me personally, which is something that, like, my dad is a very mellow guy. Like, I didn't have a bossy parent, you know, who was like, no, no absolutely not. We won't stand for that. I was like, oh, okay. And so as a friend, that's just an incredible thing to have. Um, you know, there are so many moments. And for me, it's, it's all her throwaways. It's the little things. It's things she says to me when I'm making a drink at the bar cart. It's, you know, dinner things. It's things she says to the, you know, uh, housekeeper who, you know, gets fired immediately. Like, it's just such a, she's got such an ease. And that is just, I don't know, it's just fascinating. It's so yeah. great to watch in that voice. And I mean. She's a national, tre an, inter national an international treasure. treasure, for sure. Um, Lauren, what was your time on Broadway like? And did you enjoy playing Adelaide? Thank you. It was really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I remember, oh, I'm not it was it was exhilarating, and it was an experience which I has unfortunately happened to me many times, where I really <laughs> figured out how to do it later than I should have. <laughs> like I, I just fi I figured out how to have ease in it. Like there's so it was so much pressure, and I put so much pressure on myself. And there are you know productions that come to Broadway or anywhere that have, you know, you're riding a wave of a kind. And this had some things against it, including people kept saying to me, 
they just did it. And it, they hadn't just done it. It had been done 15 years earlier. Maybe, but maybe 20. For Broadway, I had seen it in college um, with Faith Prince. It was incredible. So, but it, for Broadway, the memory was too recent. Mm. And, and my Broadway friends would say that. And I was like, but that is crazy. <laughs> but it wasn't. So it was, it, and, and it's, um, somebody said to me, you know, when you're doing a musical, you can't, you think you're going to, like, meet somebody for lunch or, like, do anything else, you're not. You're going to rest your voice, go nowhere, do nothing, and then use, use it all in the show. So it's a very strange life. I'm sure Sutton Foster has it figured out and is like having Literally. in Manhattan right now. Is she still? Is that in the show? But, here? Be here. <laughs> but um, so it was just a huge learning curve. But it was, I mean, the most exhilarating. And by the way, the late Ray Liotta, who I do, did not know at all, I was deciding about it. And it was it was between that and some something else, and I, I was, we just got talking on a on a plane. I'd never met him before, and and he said, "What are you doing?" And I said, "Oh, you know, I'm deciding between these two things." He goes, "Do the musical, obviously. What are you going to do? Another movie?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, I don't know." So that was why I did it. <laughs> you never know. Inspiration will hit. What is your dream role and your dream co-star? That's me. We, mm -hmm. That's clear enough. Do you have a dream role, dream co-star? Anyone you'd like to work with, actor-wise, that you haven't? I I just don't think like that. Okay. Um, I really this doesn't mean there isn't one, but I um, I can't believe I got one. Let alone I loved the experience of Parenthood and Sarah Braverman. I always feel like I, she's like gets short shrift, but but um, I I. I can't believe I got to do what I got yeah. to do. So, I mean, it's theater geek stuff. Like, you know, it's more in the realm of what would challenge me. Like, Can I pitch you? Yes, please. Me, you, May Miles, who's afraid of Virginia Woolf. Wow. That literally just came to me. I, wow. would, I would rather play Martha, of course. <laughs> I will let you Let's think about it. It's something like that. It's something where everybody goes, oh, she'll never pull that off. And I'll be like, <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, this is one of my questions too, Lindy, so thank you. <laughs> Do you have any suggestions for someone who wants to be a writer and doesn't know where to start? The suggestion for everyone trying to do anything is you can't help but get better with practice. You, you, if you tried everything you possibly could to get worse at whatever it is, <laughs> you would not by sheer just sitting down and, and putting words on paper. And I was really blown away by that in my, uh, my first book. The hard thing is we're ever evolving and we're hopefully uh, learning and growing all the time. And what's strange about a book is you get to the end and then you go, oh, but I've learned so much now if only I st could start again. And I think some people do that, <laughs> which is how books don't get published. You know, <laughs> oh. um, at some point you have to like show it to somebody or, you know, it has to come out of your hands and it's just, it represents the time it represents. But it is really, there's no, it's the trick is getting out of whatever is in your way and um, making yourself work. And then, and then I think there's a thing too of, uh, oh, and this has really help, been helpful for, for me and, and for you, mm -hmm. is to have a group that you meet with, just to even say your goals. You don't have to like, I'm in one now where we're a little bit critiquing each other, and that can be, and everybody's a professional writer of some kind, so they're, it's okay, but I, I, in the world of getting to the end, yeah. I don't know that stopping along the way, you know, and being like, I don't know, you know, what if you started this way? It just will keep you in process for perhaps too long. But one of my friends in this group said, ah, I'm, I'm, gonna sh I'm gonna start showing my book to people. It's, I've, I've got like 70 pages, I'm on page 70. And I was like, and I don't know where this came from, I made it up in the moment, but I was like, beware page 70. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> It's Are you serious. Yes, it makes it was to Was Pete. it someone I know? Yeah. Pete. Yeah, Pete. Okay. He, he was so <laughs> excited about like getting to page 70 and I was like that's how you don't get to page 270 is like you're like, you know, page 42. I just feel like, you know, and it, and it, it, so everybody I know, even the m most best writers uh, do a draft that they hate and they think is terrible, but they get to the end. 
and then you go back. This lady right here also is a, an amazing mentor, guide, friend for if you are trying to write. So thank you. We're in, a, we're in a more loose. That doesn't help them, Sam. I don't care. I'm here for my, <laughs> here for me. Uh -huh. uh, so um, I'm going to go back to, we're almost done. I keep seeing a light and I've done enough comedy that I think I'm getting the light. But are it's we getting not the that. light? No, 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 no. That's my interpretation of things because I'm insecure. It's we someone have... on the TikTok, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> That's what it is. Are they out there taking camera photos for the tweet twat? Okay. Um, oh, I didn't mean to say that. Anyway, oh, this is why I can't be in public too long. What? I like this from Twitter. If you, what we, okay, and we have two minutes, so make it, make it count. Oh. Ouch! I mean, we can, I, what is everyone like, do you have a class to go to? Like, we can go. Mm. <laughs> no, Drew Barrymore and Phil Rosenthal are on at nine. <laughs> um, what reality show would you like to be on? If you could, if you were like anonymous lady who was on a reality show. Well, my answer disappoints me because <laughs> I wish the first thing I thought of was like one of the fun ones where you're just like drinking and getting in fights with people. <laughs> but, but it is. You should come home with me. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> or like, you know, Love Island where it's like, oh, more hot guys? I couldn't possibly. <laughs> but I think it's probably, no, oh, you know what it is? is? It's like, it's one of the competition things um, and I used to think it was Survivor, but I don't have that game. Like, I don't have, I, I, I literally, like, at the- You're not treacherous. I'm not, and, but I can't even follow <laughs> Survivor. Like, <laughs> like, when they do the thing, I'm like, wait, I thought they had an alliance. Wait, hold on. Like, I don't understand, I don't understand. I, I don't understand. Amazing Race, I think. I would like, I think me and you should do Amazing Race. You. Except that. <laughs> Except that picture us not at a Four Seasons. We can't I know, even do a we two and a half. Possibly. Season. Oh no. We, we don't camp and don't we get on planes and run around yeah. and do things. Yeah. No. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I want you to. If there's like a glamping, like a high yeah. end. Or like Bear Grylls. Except oh, I feel oh. I feel like they. Do you know what Bear Grylls is? It's like survival. But it's then. Oh. There are certain oh. there are certain things that I really 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 can't do, and I feel like they'd find like like enclosed spaces and stuff, and I feel like they'd find. Well, now I've told them, I feel like they would find out what those things are, and they'd be like, "Well, your partner's gonna die unless you crawl through this tiny tiny crevice in the mountain," and I'd be like, "Ugh." Ah. So, but I don't know, something like adventure. -y. Can we do when they do one? I actually get famous, and then we go together on the Great British Baking Show American oh. thing. Why didn't I say that? Ugh. That's, why That's I'm obviously here. what it is, except yeah. what, the Great British Baking Show gluten free yes, edition. I... <laughs> Y'all write Netflix now, because they need to do that. Um, anything you want to say? Cozy tent. Oh. Oh, Paul Hollywood giving you the look. And no one's mean. No. And they they win a cake stand. And they're like, ah. <laughs> Here we'd be like, where's my million dollars? Yeah. I don't want this stupid cake stand. I always thought they won like 50,000 pounds or something. But no. The, and then I they realized pride, they don't. They pride, Sam. Good old fashioned pride. Love of the game. <laughs> Love of the game. Um, would you like to um, do your closing song that I, <laughs> or I'll do mine. No. <laughs> would you like to, <laughs> don't have an ending. Would you like to wrap it up with some words of wisdom? Oh, God, no. Okay. I, I... Do you want me to ask you the last question here? Is it, how do you know it's the last one? Because it's the last one left. I've done the rest. What, I thought it's, I didn't understand what you... I, your, your Gigi looks like a 66, and I was like... And then I thought you said not proud of, and I'm like, we're not going to go to that. But it's... <laughs> I thought it said, what 66 moment are you not proud of? I was... <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but it's GG, not signed. GG <laughs> moment are you, I think, most proud of? Yeah. Any? I'm trying to think if I have answers for both. Do you remember any of it, basically? <laughs> it's so hard, and I feel so bad when people want a moment because they're, because the viewing experience, I think, is so different than the doing experience. And there were so many days that were so special. There were so many scenes I got to do that I, I thought were incredible. 
Um, and I know it didn't like hit all the notes for everybody, but, and I wrote about it, I wrote a whole other book about it, but I, I, I still can feel the feeling of walking back on set, although it wasn't the same set, so it was the same feeling but different, and I was the same but different, of getting to do A Year in the Life, and, and things like Amy saying, you know, anybody you want to bring on, and me getting to say, like, I want, let's have, find something for Sam, and I was like, like... where are the gay guys in this festive, gorgeous... <laughs> Michelle doesn't count, he wasn't out, and he lived in a different town. <laughs> So just every day was like a dream. Your birthday. Well, I just want to say when the day that we got to be there on, it was either, the, it was around March 16th mm -hmm. and the Carol King had wrapped and we were in the, uh, the uh, you're going to yell at me because I don't always say the right things, the town hall place. Mm -hmm. the, and, and she was like, I'm going to give you a private concert and you can't, no phones, no recording, well, nothing. Well, I remember she, she's such a force Carol, she's really um, just very present, and um, there was a piano in this room because she was playing it <laughs> in the scene. Well, but they're getting ready for Miraculously, the there was a piano in the room. <laughs> Stage right. <laughs> and and we were done for the day, right? It was night, and yes. everybody's gathered around, and it's sort of like dark and, you know, candlelighty. And Carol, I feel like she, she said, she, like hovered over the piano for a second and I feel like I said because I didn't want people to because I have a problem <laughs> I said can we film it or do, do you want us to film it and she said nope and everybody put their phones down and she's like this is just for us yeah. just for now yeah and she played when you're down yeah she did yeah. the song and we were holding hands and Rose you know Rose Abdu was there, I think probably Sally, and oh my God, I'm just crying. But I remember too, there are just some things that are so hard to articulate to the people who mean the, so much. And earlier, I feel like it had only been like a year, like that, that whole thing came together, it was like on its, it came together quickly on the one hand, but on the other hand it always felt like they were like, well, I mean, this might not work out and we're building the sets, but also maybe not. And like, it was so kind of crazy but that a year earlier, I feel like we'd been at, uh, Amy and the cast had been at the Austin TV Festival and it was still very much, hold your applause, very much <laughs> up in the air. Um, and Amy said with like, full, you know, she said, sometimes you just get one. And if that's what I got, and then, you know, it's how I feel too. Like, so as quickly as she had already said that, we, there we were. And I it was a fast negotiation. remember like just looking across the room to her. Mm. And it was just sort of like, it said it all like, you know, and I think it was <laughs> during, you've got a friend, but I mean, it just meant so much to um, to everyone, and obviously to have you there. But the two of us, like, and we had had such a journey, you know, it's very strange relationship when you're sort of starting out as an actor, and because if you're lucky, the character you're playing is a little bit the writer, you know, you're the writer's kind of muse, which, or, you know, who they, that's their voice, and it's a responsibility, and it can just have, it has so many facets to it and that we got to, in, in kind of a new way, you know, mm -hmm. have this, share this thing. Again, back to the then, the way it felt then, and then the right. way it felt later, just right. like all these different things. Right, and I, and I really, you know, it's partially what's in this book about how do we understand the importance of a moment in the moment it's happening, it's, it's, it's really hard to do, and so to, you know, I, I just try to feel the gratitude, you know. Well, I think this possible. moment now has, for me, been like that, and probably <laughs> for everyone here. So, thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Is that it? <laughs>